Okay, we've got our audience into the theatre, into the map of the city, and they've seen those pre-play rituals which tell us about the ideology and power and authority of the state. We've had an occasion already to make us feel like we belong to a city. Then we're going to watch tragedy. And perhaps the most famous tragedy of all is Oedipus the king. The question that stops Oedipus in his tracks is uttered by Tiresias the prophet. It's not really a question, it's a statement. But for Oedipus, it's a question. Tiresias says, you don't know who you are or who your parents are. At that point, Oedipus, who's been yelling and screaming at the prophet for being corrupt, stops and says, no, who? Who am I? Where do I come from? And that's one of the founding questions of this play. There are two great questions that run all the way through the play. The first is, who are you? Who am I? The second is about knowledge. How do I know who I am? And those two questions are constantly intertwined in the most interesting way in the Oedipus play. Let's begin with Oedipus's original motivation. He hears at a feast a drunken man say, Ah, oh, your dad's not your dad, your mum's not your mum. And that worms away at him. So he goes to the oracle to find out who he is, to ask that question about his parents at Delphi, and he's told he's going to kill his father and sleep with his mother. So he runs away from his parents to avoid that horrific outcome, and straight away on the road meets a man he kills, gets to Thebes, solves the riddle of the Sphinx, and has given a woman's hand in marriage. And as we know, they will have turned out to have been his father and mother. But in the play, Oedipus doesn't know all that yet. And his original task is to try and find out who the killer of Laius is. And what's so interesting in the play in which that initial, who is the killer of Laius, question becomes the question of who is Oedipus, that Oedipus will pursue to the bitter end. Oedipus thinks he knows that he is the king of the city, that he's a father to his children, that he is the husband to his wife, and he's the son of his parents. What the play is going to reveal, not just that he isn't who he thought he was, that he's actually brother to his children, and that he's the murderer of his father, and that he's the husband of his mother, but also that none of those words quite work. He can't find the language because incest messes up all the words that you can use for who you are and how you're placed inside a family or inside a city. And the one word that you would think is most determinative of who you are is your name. But for Oedipus, his name is going to become a riddle. Now, when the messenger comes in, and he's going to reveal, finally, a lot of the plot to Oedipus, the messenger tells Oedipus why he's called Oedipus. And he says, you are called Oedipus because of your swollen foot. And Oedipus says, yes, I've long carried that blame. He has a swollen foot because his parents pierced his ankles before sending him off to be killed as a child, although he was saved. And he thinks that's the meaning of his name. But gradually the play reveals a whole series of different meanings for Oedipus's name. It's revealed perhaps most strikingly when the messenger comes in. And the messenger comes in and says, in English, a very boring set of lines. He says, can I learn where the house of Oedipus is? Do you know where Oedipus is? Can you tell me where Oedipus is? Very boring. Until you hear in Greek the last two words of each line, which are mathoim hopu oidipu kotisthopu. Can you hear the language there? The repetition? What it sounds with is the word, do you know where? 
The name Oedipus turns out to have the etymology, do you know where? That is, do you know where you are? He thought he was in a foreign city. He was actually in his own city. He thought he'd traveled from his parents. He was actually traveling to his parents. Oedipus's inability to understand his own name is his first and founding problem. He can't control the language that tells you who you are. The very last line of the play has Oedipus saying, don't take my children away. But Creon says, you have to let them go. The things you controlled in life, you no longer control. They did not follow you. That is to say, the last lines of the play emphasize that what we've seen here is a failure of control over a story because you do not understand what your position is, where you're going. Now that sounds absolutely fine. It shows us a classic tragic story of decline. A man who thought he was strong who becomes weak. A man who thought he was in control who loses it. And it's often described in the literature on the play as if this was a question of dramatic irony. That is, we as an audience watch the horrific story unfurl as Oedipus gradually discovers who he is. And for us, the tragedy is watching that process. I think everybody who reads Oedipus has exactly the same response. They think, if Oedipus is so clever, how come he can't avoid the oracle? After all, if you were told you're going to sleep with your mother and kill your father, it's easy to avoid, isn't it? You just don't kill anybody older than yourself or sleep with anybody older than yourself. How hard is that? Isn't it easy to avoid the problem? That's when the play gets you. The play gets you the moment you think that you really are smug and in control. When you get to the crossroads, do you really know what you're doing? Here you are, about to go to university, about to make big decisions in your life. Do you think you know what you're doing? You think you're in charge, in control of the story? Oedipus is the best reader trap ever. It says to everybody, look, you know more than the characters, you know more than the characters. But then it gets you as you realise, actually, like Oedipus, you may think you're in charge, but actually there are forces beyond you that are leading you towards your own tragedy. And in this day and age, when there's so much self-confidence about science, about the politics of politicians, about economics. Everyone tells you they have the answer. Oedipus has never been so important a play to watch. It reminds you that you do not know where you are or who you are, or most importantly, what you are doing now and how it's going to affect your life to come. Tragedy is a very sobering and frightening story.